here, this is quite a different view than I had anticipated. This is a beautiful thing to be looking out at all of your smiling faces this morning. Uh, I'm Pastor Patrick. I get to um, serve you as your new pastor, and I'm very excited to um, be here to share what's most important, and that's God's word with you. This text is, um, is kind of uniquely timed. Uh, when I was interviewing for this call, Tom Fiedler and all of the call committee were very clear with me that stewardship is one of my primary responsibilities. And here, I get a stewardship text my very first time uh, getting to preach the word. So buckle in. <laughs> no, this is beautiful. And, and ladies, that song was so beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And the question, who am I, is being answered in this text over and over and over, right? The I in this text, I is the focus of this person's life. I, I, I. It's all first person, uh, singular. It's not about others. It's all about I. And so that's one of the things we're going to dive into this morning. I hope you don't mind, but I'd be, be better out here uh, a little closer to you guys. Um, the I. This text is one those that you hear um, I and me and my, it's all about the person, right? Now, the reality is this guy is probably a very shrewd business person. He's been very um, successful as a farmer. Any farmers in here? I don't know if we have. Okay, that's about how many were at Christ the King, too. Uh, <laughs> So we don't have to worry about the fall tithing uh, for uh, the crops coming in. But no, this, this um, farmer has been very successful. He's, he's turned um, a good profit. It says he's very wealthy, and he's doing what any one of us would do, and that's planning for the future. He's got more crops than his buildings are able to store. He says, I'm just going to tear those down and I'm going to build some new ones. And he's got all this planning going on. And then at that point, he's just going to kick back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. That doesn't sound so awful, right? But he's called a fool. He's called a fool in here because what happened is he forgot this was a gift from God. This was not something that he had accomplished. This is something that God has given him. We know that all that we have is a gift from God and that that's why we share it with others. He forgot that little piece, right? He forgot the other. He says, what am I going to do? Um, I should, I have no place to store my crops. I will do this. I will, my barns, I will, my, my, my. It's natural. We get successful and we see how good we can become sometimes and, and we forget that this is truly a gift from God and not ours at all. So the, the my focus is the problem here, right? Right? The reality is, and in that first text you heard it, in the Colossians text, that that's idolatry, right? And we know our Ten Commandments, right? Who knows that one about having no gods before God? You remember that one? It kind of, it's one of those primary ones. That's the problem. It's idolatry. When we start to focus on us and our possessions, they become idols, right? And, and that's where he runs into problems. He's into idolatry. Got too much stuff. And I know that in this world, stuff can be a problem. Um, stuff gets in the way. We got too much stuff that we got to get rid of in our house before we can move here. We got stuff. 
12 years of stuff accumulating because we had big enough barns to hold it all, right? So now it's time for us to get rid of some of that stuff. Remembering what's important is this word from God. So as you think about idolatry, you probably think, well, I haven't built any golden calves lately, right? I haven't been, been doing any of that kind of stuff, so I'm probably okay. But as some wiser folks in our congregation who, uh, who were visiting with me the other day might tell you that there's other forms of idolatry. You don't need to just have a golden calf as an idol. We make all kinds of things idols in our lives, don't we? Might be the car we drive or the reputation that we have to keep up, the, the sense that um, we don't want people to know our real self. We can't become vulnerable because if they knew the real me, they might not like me, right? Those kinds of things are always, they, they have the way of becoming idols. They're not bad in and of themselves. We all have uh, jobs to do. We produce, we, we help the economy. All of that's fine. It's when be that becomes an idolic situation that's when the problem occurs. Now, in the church, you would never think that that kind of thing could happen, right? We, as the church, would never have idols, but do we? I haven't found them out yet, but we call them here sacred cows. What are the sacred cows that I'm going to find as I get to know this congregation better? What are those things that ought not be messed with? I'll find those out because I'll step right into them and you guys will let me know. Um, I don't know what those are yet, but even those, whatever they may be, can become idols. And again, there's nothing wrong with them in and of themselves, but what happens is it gets in, our, in the way of our right relationship with God. And that's the important part, is trying to remove anything that separates us from the love of God found in Christ Jesus. So as we go forward, help me identify some of those things that maybe we need to talk about, that we need to think about together, that may have become a bit of an idol that's getting in the way of us as a congregation really serving God's mission here on earth. I don't know what they are, but I know you do. And we'll find them out together. So as we go forward, remember that this mission that we have from God, that's the important part. Even that we could create as an idol if we don't handle it properly. So we have to go forward together, knowing that we don't do this for our own sake. We do this for the sake of others, God's creation. And it's okay that we're going to mess up because God loves us so much, he sent Jesus Christ to die for us. So we don't have to worry about all of these other things. We've already been forgiven, but we can do so much better when we work together for the mission of God out in this community. So thanks be to God. Amen.